and welcome to Rada St. Andrew to the third in our six part series in the Pay Yes to Fresh Backyard Garden. Today, we have our host is Mr. Mark Harvey, and we are joined by Mr. Lenny Walker, yeah. who is a water utilization officer. Remember, you can join us on Rada JM and Instagram and also on Facebook. Also, look online and you can see our Zoom link. I am Celia Mann from RADA Head Office. We want to thank our RADA St. Andrew staff for hosting us and also our sponsors. Our sponsors for this back, Say Yes We Fresh Backyard Garden series is um, Digital Foundation, Evergrow Garden Center, um, AgroViews, and our set designed by Skyfall Events. Good morning and thank you for joining us. I turn over to Mr. Mark Harvey. Yes, pleasant, pleasant. Good morning, one and all. It is, it is good to be here another day. We will be going through irrigation. And this is a, a very, very important thing that we have been discussing for some time now in relation to the whole climate change and all the different, different activities that will normally take place in reducing the usage of water in a matter of conserving. Um, with me here as with me here is Rene, Rene Walker. He's our, he works within the, the water management unit within um, RADA. And he'll be giving us some guidance and some information in relation to what are some of the practices that we need to carry out in, in going forward, um, in doing what the practices that is required for the, the production and usage of, of water. So I want us all to pay attention today. But before before we even speak to that, um, we are going to have some a spot prize that will be donated by Evergrow, our main sponsor. So we'll be asking four questions. The questions will not be coming in now. It will be coming in in the next half an hour. And um, the first person who is able to answer these four questions will get this lovely prize that is right before us. All right, donated by Evergrow. So, Mr. Walker, welcome, welcome to this series. To be here. And um, we we want you to shed some light on your unit so that um, persons can know some of the services that RADA has to offer. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Harvey. Good morning, everyone, viewers, listeners, everyone. I'm happy to be here just to shed some light on this very important subject matter. Uh, my unit, that I represent is the on-farm water management unit uh, led by Mr. Burton Bates. And we have four other officers, um, Sir Lawrence Rowe from the Western region and Mr. Winston Baines from the Central region and myself, Rene Walker from the Eastern region. As the name suggests, on-farm water management unit, on-farm. All right, our focus is on the Farm, but we do on farm management and managing water or the usage of water in an efficient manner. All right, um, our goal is to promote water usage or efficient water usage. Also, we also promote what we call soil and water conservation measures. All right, and these are done in various forms. All right, um, to achieve that, let me say to achieve that, of course, we will to um, advise our field visits, our farm visits, our site visits, and we will go and we'll assess the area to see what is happening. We have to look at our plot size, the dimension of our plot. We have to look at our water source, which is very critical because if you don't have water, then you can't talk about irrigation because irrigation basically is the artificial um, application of water to the soil. Yes. And so if we don't have water, then it makes no sense we consider um, irrigation. All right, we also do what we call water source investigation or reconnaissance. We also do training session. We offer um, designs for plots, design in the sense that we will come and we will say exactly um, how your irrigation system will be laid out on your farm. Um, we will give you a sketch and the sketch will determine your bill of quantity and your bill of quantity will say what you will need exactly to, um, to set up your plot, all right? So we'll send it to our suppliers and they will give us the estimate 
and then we will arrange for setup and the setup is in the form of what we call installation and of course that is available to anyone who is interested you can always you know call our unit um and speak to us at the end of the show if i'm privy we i can give you the contact information to do so right. all right in a bye. nutshell that's what our unit bye, um, does bye, bye. <laughs> that is not really a nutshell you know? that is our entire <laughs> shell you know but um it is good to know that um these are some services that are available to help our farmers you know and um the thing is that uh, rather is here to really ensure that people know that um, there are practices that needs to be carried out and it ought to be done in a certain yes. way. So what we want is that the program is not only to garner to the small farmer or the backyard gardener, but we want also persons to know the services that the Rural Agriculture Development Authority offers yes. to the people of Jamaica who have interest in agriculture. We are going to now go into the, 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 the we, well, we did a pre-filming before, yes. so we're going to go into that. And then after, we'll be having questions and answers. We'll be having a little discussion in relation to some of the tools and equipment that is required for you to set up your small irrigation system at home. All right. Um, so remember, um, listen carefully. And then we're at the end of the, the evening after the day, we'll be sharing this lovely package. That is donated by Evergrow, the first of many to come. One and all, welcome to another in the series. Say yes to fresh backyard garden style. With me today is a very, very good friend of mine and a co-worker, Rene Walker. He works with the unit that deals with irrigation and farm irrigation water unit, management. water management yeah. unit. And they will be, he will be giving us some guidance in relation to irrigation, the practices that we should carry out, how to construct and to modify. So we are going to ask Mr. Walker to give us some information in relation to what are the materials that are required to construct the, the system itself on farm and what is going to be required for to modify for a backyard garden. So, so what? All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Harvey. We want to encourage persons to use uh, water efficiently. All right, we don't want for you to waste water because it is a very scarce commodity. And so we want for, for you to use it you know in an efficient manner all right and we are here just to show you one way to do it so here we are today we are going to set up what we call a gravity drip irrigation system gravity means that you, you're going to mount what we call a storage tank on a base and then now because of the height that it is at then it will allow the water to flow in what we call now our main irrigation system today all right so let us go we have our tank, as I said before, is a 200 gallon tank. All right, and this, of course, this is, ideal for this is of course, yes, yes, ideal, very ideal. So, this is, of course, a person who can really afford a 200 gallon tank. All right, for a person who can't, then we're going to show you otherwise. All right, so we are saying that you must have your base. The base is very critical. All right, and in this case, the base we use some blocks, regular 8 inches blocks to build our base. The height of it is about three feet. As you can see with our tape measure here, what we are saying, that you should have a three feet height. The three feet height now will determine the operating pressure. It can be three feet or higher, but it should not be lower than three feet. That's what we are saying. All right? So now we have our base. Our base must be sturdy. Our base must be strong enough to hold because this is an, when the water goes inside the storage tank, what we are saying here, one gallon of water equal to 10 pounds so this is basically 2000 pounds of water so it must have something strong enough to hold the water when when when, when this tank is, is filled up another thing that we must take into consideration about building or constructing our base you must know the diameter of the base so when i turn the tank over and you measure along the diameter of the tank the base of the tank in this case at 200 gallons you will get three feet all right for other bigger tanks the size is much bigger so you must know the size of your your tank base 
in order to know the size of your base because you don't want the tank to be hanging off all right because if the tank hung off you can end up damage your tank and then remember you spend money to buy this and you don't want to waste your money all right the next component that we need to have we need to have what we call now fittings irrigation fittings all right in this case we have done a pre-setup already all right but i have some here that is not set up that we can actually show you all right because the bulkhead here comes in one inch then we want to reduce it so we use what we call a reducer bushing which is from one to three quarter and we put it inside the bulkhead the bulkhead comes with a female end what we are saying any fitting irrigation fitting that you buy we don't you see the treading on the inside we are saying is a female fitting and anyone with the treading on the outside is a male fitting so in this case we call this a female male so we use the series of hermaphrodite okay so what we are saying here each tank comes with what we call a bulkhead so the bulkhead is the outlet and we have the inlet here you can fill the tank here but this is now the outlet which is the bulkhead the bulkhead comes with a female end all right and what we are saying this bulkhead is one inch bulkhead we are now using three quarter fittings and so we want to reduce it from one to three quarter hence we use what we call a reducer bushing this reducer bushing is a female male reducer bushing all right so what we do now we connect now to connect now to the bulkhead we screw the male end inside of the bulkhead but before we do that what we are saying every male end of a fitting should you should have what we call our thread tape attached to it all right why, why is that and why is that so is to prevent leaks basically all right and for easier connection and especially if you're connecting metal metals to plastic they don't want to mess up the threading all right so this is how we put on our thread tape very easy to put on not too hard you want to cover all the threaded area and then we do our connection all right and then after that's the case now we're gonna have now the female end left for us to insert now the male in of what we call now our ball valve so this is what we call a brass ball valve all right so what's, the, what's the purpose of the ball the ball valve is basically to um, control the amount of water that comes from your tank you can manage the amount of water that comes from your tank you can turn so it's like a lock off we know it in jamaica as a lock off but the right word for it is a valve and ball because when you turn inside you see a ball okay. inside there and it's brass in nature because of the material metal that makes it up so the same concept apply for the ball valve with the male end you want to put on your thread tape likewise all right so since we already have our reducer bushing and our ball valve in this case this reducer bushing is metal but this is plastic we call it polyethylene pe all right so since that is the case and we are ready have our connection we are going to just put this down now and then we're going to focus on one very critical component of our irrigation system which is called our filter in this case this is what we call a screen filter the reason why it is screen when you pull the bottom of it a screen is in it this work like a little strainer with filter to remove any form of debris or sediments that is in our water especially for a person who are practicing what we call rainwater harvesting water coming from gutters from the roof flowing in your tank you want to know that you are filtering the water because what we are saying if you don't filter anything that gets inside the drip irrigation system will clog it all right so this is what we call now a screen filter there are other filters like disc fil filter I, I just like um cyclone filter we have our sun filter but don't worry too much about those terminology we are going to focus on that the screen filter comes with a little arrow that you want to focus on that arrow anywhere you want for the water to go that's the direction that you should point the arrow all right screens filter also come with two male ends and what did we say again once we have any male ends we must put on what we call our thread tape or what we call teflon tape any one of the term you are correct all right so putting on our thread tape nicely
all right very nicely all right so if that one that's the case now as we say we want for the arrow to be pointing in the direction where we want the water to go so all right nice and easy and after we are through with that now we want we want for the water to go down if it's a case where it was on an hill then there's no need for us to put a pipe down all right but since we are on the flat we don't want for the pipe to be hanging in the air like that so we're going to use now to bring the water down to the base we're going to use what we call now a female elbow adapter as you can see it has a the threading on the inside all right that's such as that is the female fitting it has an elbow and it's going to be adapted to what we call now our main pipe all right so this is what we call now a female elbow a adapter and this is from 25 mn to three quarter because we are working with three quarter fittings because the filter is three quarter in size three quarter inches in size then we're going to connect what we call a female elbow adapter 25 mm to three quarter all right nothing is wrong if you slant your filter in this direction just to allow for your female elbow adapter to be pointing down all right but we don't want for you to have your filter up in the hair like that that is not the correct way of of positioning your filter all right a lot of farmers do that and the reason for that if you are going to clean your filter like this and you have the connection already all the sediments will be settled here but if it is pointing down or to the side in this case or to the side then I easily can remove the screen and everything will fall out all right and you basically take what we call a little toothbrush something soft and just brush inside and out into some water and put it back in all right as simple all right so in order for us to know the distance we need to so this now is what we call our 90 degree elbow all right so this is 90 degree elbow and it's 25 mm because of the, the 25 mm shows that we are using 25 mm pipe 25 millimeter what we are saying 25 millimeter is equal to one inch so we are working with a one inch pipe all right so inside of our inside of the fittings that has the caps in we have some little accessories or fittings in this case this is what we call our compression ring all right and it come with a little slit this signify when we put in this on we have to pull it apart like this to put it down all right and this is a cap and when we put in the man if you notice both shapes the shape like a cone up top is very broad and it narrows as it goes down we are saying we're not putting the man it is cone to cone so this first and then this after it should be cone to cone all right inside of the end of this fitting and all the fitting that comes with this caps in here has all that i'm showing here inside of this now is what we call our o-ring this serves as a little washer you want for this to be there if not it will cause the system to leak and you want to prevent that all right so here goes we are going to do a measurement at this time you want to know that you are measuring they say measure twice and cut once all right so what we are saying here this this the 90 degree elbow will be pointing downwards all right and what we are getting here now when measuring of course you don't want to measure up top you want to measure to the point where the pipe is going to fit inside of the fitting which is a 90 degree elbow and the female elbow adopter and we are getting 39 inches here so i'm going to ask my colleague mr Harvey, to hold the main for me please and we are going to cut 39 inches when cutting though the pipe coming out in a roll you want to straighten it in order to get the correct measurement i come some more sorry so i'm gonna ask uh, we're gonna cut right here this is where we get a 39 let's push it up some more let's it up all right when doing the connection always connect from bottom up all right want to straighten this a little 
just a little so when doing the connection this is how we do it caps end first remember cone to cone and this is how we pull this thing which is a compression ring all right so cone to cone notice the shape all right then you want to insert now 25 mm inside of our 90 degree elbow which is 25 mm to 25 mm 25 mm 25 mm that signify pipes can go into both ends and then you will I remember not to pull sorry I, I let me highlight this remember not to pull pull on this like this is to open the compression ring and pull it if you pull on it what you can do you can scrape the pipe and that can cause leakage all right and remember we are trying to use water efficiently and this drip irrigation system will allow, allow us to do that all right so this is a the connection then now we connect it now to what we call now our female elbow adapter and it is 25 mm which is a 25 mm pipe end to three quarter with a three quarter end of our screen filter again cone to cone cone to cone again we insert push it right up until it reach the end and remove it up like that again and then we do our tightening then it is now time for us now to connect our main now to the field so we're moving now from storage filter ball valve filter female elbow adapter a piece of pipe to bring the water down 90 degree elbow and then to our field all right now we are going to connect the 25 mm main which is this polyethylene of course pe to our 90 degree elbow and this is how it is done so we take off the caps end remember cone to cone again and this is how we pull it apart insert the 25 mm main inside our 90 degree elbow pull it down do our connection all right what is important also is that we have a main peg to peg right along here and tight on so we can stabilize um, the main okay so this is basically what a simple layout is about that you have a, a opening at the, the end of the pipe or the, the 25 mm all right so the what, what all right so the opening yes thank you very much for that so our main line should have what we call now an end plug and the end plug work basically like a bong all right so the same concept cone to cone put this on first we are going to demonstrate it later and put this in to so prevent the water from coming out the main all right yes mr walker thank you man for for a session like that by a farmer with a hole in man he, he don't need more information i don't know if just go back to the youtube and and get all of that information yes. but our focus and emphasis is really on the the man with his backyard okay okay right? and um we know that a lot of persons just about a small space mm -hmm. so um for them to go and buy a 200 gallon or a 400 gallon drum or tank um, I don't think it would be as feasible as they would want it to be. But what we are looking at, remember we're using the three R's. Recycle, reuse, reuse and reduce. reduce. Yeah. Alright, so persons who can get a 45 gallon drum, we're going to recycle. Yes. And when we recycle, you know, reusing, by putting, yeah. constructing a, a mini irrigation, we're going to reuse. Yes. And what we're going to use that also, now where the reduce comes in, is the amount of water that they would normally use on the farm. Yes. All right, because we're now going to show them how to construct ah. a very low cost, yes, low cost system that they can use on their garden at home. Okay, so um, we we we're going to go into the, the different materials that is required. And um, as you can see, we have just some PVC pipes. Yes. Um, I wouldn't mind if you could explain the same principle for the, the, the 
mini irrigation compared to that. So All right. Okay. Thank you, sir, RV. So remember when we start, look, we said that is the ideal. Now with more, we want to show more a rustic, what we call a homemade that you can, Jamaican say, turn your hand and make fashion. Yes. Yeah, so this in, in this context, right? So here it is, we have our blocks again. So you want to ensure that your, your 45 gallon tank is mounted. Because remember, we're talking about gravity. So mount, ensure that it is mounted on blocks. As high as you can get it, that will be good. The better it is for the pressure. All right, this is a 45 gallon. In this case here, this doesn't have an open, as uh, a small opening in the top. The entire area is not open for some tanks. The entire area is open, all right? To get our bulkhead, we will have to create our bulkhead, all right? So what some person will have the drill, you have to have the correct bit yes. that will match up with what we call our male adapter. Because remember the trading industry on the outside again, is a male adapter, PVC fitting. So this is not like the other fittings, all right? So once you create your hole using a drill, you want to ensure it is not too much to the base, all right and you want it to you don't want to have it close to the base but not right onto the end of the base because right there is, is very um tough all right so you take a drill first you measure so you take a fittings and you measure the area all right and the fitting is what we call our male adapter pvc and you take a pen mark the area out and then you can take a knife if you don't have a drill and you will cut the area out until and you try the male adapter to fit in it so here it is now we have the same size hole as our male adapter. So now we are going to do our simple connection. So first we need our hole to be drilled out or cut out the size as, 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 our, as our male adapter. And then we need to have our thread tape again to prevent any leaks. And with our attachment, very simple compared to the other one. Very simple. In a case where this was cut out, what we can encourage that you have a male adapter and you put a female adapter inside and you put a little rubber over the male adapter to prevent any leaks. But in this case, because the hole is precise, then we just need a male adapter. It, and, and once you put on your thread tape, then it seals the area. The next thing, remember we're talking about our valve. Over that side, we use what we call our brass ball valve. In this case, now we're going to use what we call our PVC ball valve. Still a ball valve because when you turn it, there's a ball also in it. These are half inch. And these are half inch. Correct, Sir Harvey. All right. So in order to connect to our ball valve, we need a piece of half inch pipe. About maybe three inches or so. All right, I will insert it. Then we connect our ball valve. In, the, in this case, you can turn the ball valve off. In this case, I might be asking, oh, we did not tangent it. We don't need to because we don't have enough pressure on the drip line to pull it off. All right, it's a very simple system. I want if, uh, if I, the household, I want to remove it from one location. Turn to the next. They'll be able they to can just just pull it up quite Yes, easy and, and, and move it. All right. Then we put what we call our another piece of half inch PVC pipe in it. And then we do the connection to our main line, which is our 25 mm main. In this case, I might be asking, where is the filter? All right, we notice that we have a filter over there to filter the water, but none is here. What we are encouraging, we are encouraging rainwater harvesting. So it's good to ensure the water that is going inside of your tank is filtered before it gets inside the tank. All right, and that is basically, I think everyone can afford um, a simple system and, as this one. And the, the thing is that um, all of these materials can be derived from Evergrow. Yes, from Evergrow, right. Because Evergrow is one of the one of the suppliers. Right. I'm just going to ask Mr. Harvey to help me. We want to run out our main. Okay. So we have to run out our main at the end, of course, of our, our plot. So Mr. Harvey will be doing that for us. And then what we want to do, we want to peg to stabilize our main. Go ahead. Pull it for Mr. Harvey, yes. So we have a peg there already. We want to put one here just to stabilize our main.
So now it is time now for us now to up attach or connect what we call our drip line to our system. So, what is, what is so before that's we that's do a connection, Sir Harvey is asking. All right, we have some very nice fittings here. As you can see, this is what we call our head connector punch. All right, it has a, 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 a very sharp end and a very pointed end. I'm going to show you how it is used. All right, this is what we call our end line. This is, this is what we go to the end of our drip line to prevent the water from coming out the drip line. This is what we call our barb coupling to do our repairs. And this is what we call our head connector. Notice the difference. One is taller, the barb coupling is taller, and this is 12 mm, which is about a little under half inch. All right? And the egg connector it has an head and it is much shorter. So that's basically the difference. One has an head and it is much shorter than the other. The other is much taller. All right? And, and um, right, and it has also three triple groove on the both ends of it. So here goes. First, we have to line up with our furrow. And this is how we do our punch. You hold the main line in your hand like this. And this main line is 25 mm. The connector punch should be in the right hand if you are right hander, of course. And then, no, you don't want to punch too much at the top or at the bottom. You want to punch to the extreme side. So, punch like this, as you can see. Then, now the point in the end of your egg connector punch, you insert it into the tail end of your egg connector and then the egg should be going inside of the main and then you insert it a pop sound and that's basically it all right i'm gonna need mr Harvey's help now with this so when you come on to a drip line if you're buying a roll we don't want to we don't want to this is a line that we don't want to touch all right we want to start to do our untwining from the end that is cut that is in the inside all right and this is the end that we want to focus on all right so we'll put our end line on like this very simple all right the aim is to always save your emitters and these are emitters and these emitters are one foot spacing emitters all right and this is where the water will come from all right so as mr up we're going along the line or the four I should say this is how we'll untwine 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 we'll reach to the end so I want for you to lower your hand on the bed the aim is to always cut the aim is to always cut between two emitters you don't want to cut too close to the emitter and then you ended up waste, wasting an emitter all right so this is how we cut, clean cut. Do a connection. And then what Mr. Harvey will do now down that side is to take another peg. This is where we have the end line. And we need a peg in order to stabilize our drip line on our furrow. So that is nicely done. As we can see, our drip line is basically lying on our bed. So we have completed our laying out of our drip line, which is our, what we call our hydrogal drip line, and our single bed. Now we want to now demonstrate how we lay out our hydrogal drip line on a broader bed, which can give us a double row spacing. So again, we have our bed. The aim is to also always ensure that the drip line is not hanging off the bed. So you want both of them to be running parallel, but you want them on your bed. All right. So basically, this is where we would put the first one. Same procedures as the one before. And the other one will be right beside it. Where, where the other connector is. Spacing, the spacing will determine the, the, the size of the bed. Or you actually space. Correct, correct. Alright, so in this case we are gonna go through the same concept. Our end line again on our hydrogal drip line. 
the aim is to always save your emitter not to waste it because truth and in fact under normal operating pressure you should be getting one liter of water per hour from these emitter all right and each of them you cut off that's one liter of water you are actually wasting all right so mr Arby is gonna go down that bed again turn mr Arby as i go along turn it out yes quickly cut remember you want to cut between two emitter and then mr Arby is now stabilizing the digital drip line at the end yes and you want to untwine the hose all right you want to take out all curves or creases because if that's the case then what we'll realize don't know water will flow to your drip line all right pull on it a little more of mr Ravi. and that's basically it so and this also allow for you to maximize on your land space all right very critical because what will happen now we are going to do a demonstration we're trying to get some water in the tank so when that is the case of course then we can show easily how the emitters drips all right so this is basically a very simple system but i still want for you to bear in mind that you must ensure that quality water is going inside of your tank because if that is not the case then you are going to clog your drip line hence for us incorporating what we call a filter on our system all right so in this case you can use anything sharon material anything fine to ensure that you filter the amount of water getting inside of your tank your soil type determines how frequent or how long you will irrigate if you have a sandy soil then you have to irrigate more frequently clay not so frequent because clay holds the water um holds the water a bit longer and then if you have silky now then it holds a bit longer than the sandy we at rather yes we really care and we don't only care about the large or medium or small farms but we care about every single jamaican who actually want to grow what they eat and, eat and what they eating grow. what they're growing yes you know and they I, I think we are buying into the say yes to fresh yes backyard garden style and i just want to say special thank you you're for, welcome sir for making yourself available you're to welcome, sir. come and share your knowledge the wealth of knowledge and have this knowledge is power yes and i i'm sure that our our clients are more than overwhelmed with the information that yes. has been given you show a man who have him farm yes he can really modify and get this thing up and running you show a person with a small space yes so they can also maximize the usage of water and we cannot say thanks no more um, but all we are requiring of our clients now is to put these practices in, in place. place and just to interject a little answer um, are i want four persons to know that they can always call um, Rennie Walker or anyone from the on-farm water management unit for advice all right anything that you have missed out on, on today you can always call us we are a phone call away all right and we are happy you know to we will be happy to assist in this regard another thing I want to ensure that farmer practice what we call rainwater harvesting yes very very critical because we don't want to overburden our NWC system and so we want for a person to practice rainwater put your gutter rains on you can have your hip roof anywhere as much as possible as you can harvest rainwater but, but when you, do when that you, when you go back and it is will be better yes a few years ago mm -hmm. um you normally go on farm mm -hmm. and when you go on farm you find a man with him doing actually rainwater harvest yes so this is one way to show that we know exactly what we need to do correct and i must say thank you again you are welcome and sir all we can say have a peaceful, productive, blessed, and constructive day. God be just blessed. Blessed. Yes, one and all. I I take it that you you saw you watched the clip, and I hope you have learned a few things from it. Um, and we cannot put emphasis on the fact that we have to ensure that we use what we have 
marina resourceful way. Yeah. You know, and um, this is this is one way where the I think the government would feel pleased to know that people would be practicing it, both rainwater harvesting and how they will also want to implement and install a mini irrigation system at the, the back of the yard. You know, um, it is it is a uh, it is a bit sad to see when persons have to be reusing the holes, you know, and and constantly just putting the water. But the thing is that they, when they do that, they actually create some other problem because um, they can create, I mean, fungal bacterial problems, mm -hmm. you know, from, from using the water in the manner yeah. by which they just spray on the crop itself. You know, but uh, Mr. Walker, um, it is good to know that you, you could share that level of knowledge with, with our clients. But um, I want us to, to take note now for our spot price. We're going to have ask four questions. And um, the four questions, I will, I will give them off now. Um, one, name our main sponsors. Two, the first three series that we have, what are the, the topics that were, we had covered? um what we also need to know name for material that is required for seedling production and what we want to know the last question is what are the four things the four main things that plants require for good growth okay so anyone who could send their answer um then we will announce the person via youtube or Zoom, okay? So um, the questions are out. Name our main sponsors, the, the topics that we have discussed over the three series thus far, um, the four things that ceilings required uh, for good production, and the four things, main things, that crops need for good growth, okay? So, we will we will see now, Mr. Walker. Yes, sir. If if persons were actually listening or over the over the three. the three weeks, you know. But um, we are here and we are going to take questions and answers eventually. But I just I just want you to do like a recap in relation to some of the things that the persons would really need for their irrigation system. All right. Thank you very much. So again, you have all watched the clip and you have seen it in details, of course. But we want for you to uh, focus more on the main component that it, you know of an irrigation system, and that is gravity, of course. You must look on your, your storage um, tank. It's very critical. And um, your tank base is also critical. That's another major component also. Also, we want to bear in mind that the valves for your system is important. This is what we call our valve. This is just an example. This is what we call our grass valve valve. Um, also, our main line. Could you pass the main line for Mr. Harvey? Main line is critical for your, you know, your, your irrigation. And in this case, we are focusing on drip irrigation system. And um, this main line, as we mentioned in the clip, is the 25 mm. Um, the main, all right, and 25 millimeter, that's what mm, mm is, all right, and then also another major component of the irrigation system, which is drip, is what we call our hydrogal drip line, all right, hydrogal drip line, which comes in this case one foot spacing emitters. But all right, me, so those are ask. the major components of your irrigation, the others are, you know, secondary and tertiary you know, fittings, but the major components of our irrigation are those. Well, let me ask a question, though, um, because we know that persons actually plant in containers and they may space these containers. Yes. Um, is it, is there any system where you may have just a straight line and you can put the, the, the emittents where you really need them? Right. So for, there are technologies, and this is a very good technology that we employ, but well, for farmers who practice containerized um, farming, as we can see here, using tires, um, 
you know, you have an old bard pan and it, you know, and you want to use it, you're throwing it away rather than throwing it away as Sarvi mentioned in the clipping earlier. You want to reuse or reduce and so on. Then you can space. Remember the emitters and the zip line, could you pass the zip line again for Mr. Harvey? They come with it in the required spacing. So in, in this case, the emitter, the emitter, sorry, are one foot spacing. All right. So if you're gonna practice containerized gardening, then you have to put your container very close to the distance of the emitter. So when you're running out, you run the main line along, and when you're running your zip line along the way of the container, then your container should be positioned where the drip lines are on your Ijagar drip line. So in that case, it can work. There are other systems. There's a system that we call a spaghetti mm -hmm. system, yes. sort of like an injector. Mm -hmm. So you run your main line and then you connect that system. I think Evergo has it and there are other suppliers. All right? And you could connect it. So those now will serve as injectors that you put directly in. Your your um containers. So All for, right. For for persons who because we're not only thinking and talking about persons with with containers and 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 backyard space, but mm -hmm. a lot of persons actually buy fruit trees. Yes. All right. They buy fruit trees, and you know fruit trees have a certain planting distance. Some maybe fifteen by fifteen, some twenty by twenty, some on twenty-five the type of by twenty-five, up to thirty feet apart. Yes. All right. And um, one of the one of the problem is that when a man planting fruit trees, mm -hmm. him, him kind of leave it up for a while. True. And him don't really go back to pruning, sure, supply nothing. Yeah, yes. and it is, yes. it is healthy. Yes. Um, and I I think for a fact that the the irrigation system, an irrigation system can be installed. Correct. To to ensure that these trees that are planted is sustained. With yeah. a certain amount of moisture over a period of time. And and I think I think through this method, yes, where where if a man don't even have the time to fertilize, mm -hmm. you can put in the fertigation. Yes, right. So right. so as Sir, as Sir Arvis mentioned that earlier, there are farmers in Jamaica presently that are irrigating their um, fruit tree, what we call fruit tree crop orchard. All right. And they use the hydrogal drip line. As we mentioned earlier in the video, the hydrogal drip line is very efficient when it comes down to water usage. We have the sprinkler, the overhead irrigation system, but when we use the drip system, it is more efficient. All right, so we have farmers who recently have installed an irrigation system for a farmer in St. Thomas. And you know, St. Thomas grows a lot of mangoes. And so, yes, there's a farmer that apply, you know, install ir drip irrigation system using um, I'm um, sorry, through their mangoes. Yes. And it works very, very good because no, we know the time it's very dry now. Sir, so I've mentioned something about the fertigation system. All right, gone over the days when we usually apply our fertilizer manually. All right, with side dressing and broadcasting and so on. Mm -hmm. Now we have more precise agriculture methods yes, yes, that we yes. can use. And in, in this case, is the irrigation system. We, are what we have what we call a fertigation system yes. where fertilizer can now be applied now in its liquid form, soluble fertilizer. Yes, it, 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 it All right, will use far less, far less than so, yes, so right, and it goes directly to the root zone. So, so do, we don't have to have volatilization, a lot of the fertilizer going in the atmosphere and wasting it. Yes, yes. it can go directly wait, to the wait, root zone. But let us let us draw back reference also, um, with the advantage. And the disadvantage. Yes. Um. You sp you, you spoke to uh, the overhead irrigation. Yes. As against right? the drift. To the against the drift. Right. Um. There are there are some some positive mm -hmm. in relation to using the drip. Yes. Com uh, um. To compare in, with the, in, right. the overhead. Yes. I can so, just go right into that, yeah. Saravi, because we bear in mind the time too. All right. So when it comes on now to the drip irrigation system, drip can be in gravity and pressure. All right. Gravity, as I showed you in the presentation earlier, mm -hmm. where your tank is mounted. And then you have pressure now, which includes the mechanization of pump. Yes. All right. The advantage with um, the drip irrigation system is that it, one, overall, it uses water in a more efficient manner. Perfect. So what you would um, also get to achieve from this system that you use your water better. You, you prevent waste, yes. in other words. Another thing, again, it also... Um, help for you to apply um, what we call liquid fertilizer 
it reduces growth of weeds. weeds. Ah. Very, very critical. Yeah. Yeah. And it also helps to even irrigate even closer to the night. Because you're not wetting up the entire plant system, the leaves yeah. and the root and so on, the water so going directly. So your fungal. Ah, very good. Because most fungal strive through moisture. Yes, and, and a bad thing yeah. about it is um the initial operating setup costs. Mm -hmm. That's, very, little, yeah. that's the only bad thing about yeah. it, you know? But, but and if you should use like a pump. But if I, if you look at the yes. the operation cost mm -hmm. in the initial stage, mm -hmm. the good thing about it is that it is reusable. Correct. So it is Correct. not like you're going to use it one time and then you have to go, go back and buy it again. Correct. It depends on how you manage. Correct. Correct. How you manage the system. Mm -hmm. Then you can have this system for, for all that. Yeah, it well, is managed properly. Well, as I said before, the system is only prone to sharp, ob sharp objects, fire, um, or even animals, in, like in St. Elizabeth and other part of the, you know, the country. Mm -hmm. Animals, you go like dogs and bite up right, yeah. and so on. But your system can be used as long as you treat it. So, you know, so, so the initial, it, the initial so cost on, right? may be a little bit high, but right. the long term, it yes. is much, much cheaper. They say a tank serve can give up to seven to nine years. But as I said, it depends on how you know you use but, the tank but, and so on. But, but there's another thing, Mr. Wall. Yes. Um, but but before we go to, on, we did not talk about the sprinkler. Yeah, that is what I was going yes, to Yes, right. Okay. The sprinkler on the contrary, no, mm -hmm. is that when you use a sprinkler system, of course, it's the opposite of the drip. Yeah. Water is not being used in an efficient manner. One. Mm -hmm. Two, fungal growth right. can be encouraged yes, and so on. And, and, yes. and, and, and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Disease. Yes. And also, if it is being used on illiterian, mm -hmm. uh, then erosion. That is, that is where I was going. That is where problem. I was going. That is where right. I was going. Because we have to we have to bear in mind that some of the practices that we actually carry out, mm -hmm. it can be either um detrimental mm -hmm. to us or or it can Useful. be beneficial. Uh, to beneficial, us. right. Right. Yes. And 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 the thing about it is that we we when you use the sprinkler, mm -hmm. what it actually does, it, it, it behaves like how the rain would behave. Correct. Right? It beats on the side. Correct. Correct. And, and that would, once the side becomes saturated, then some level of erosion can take place. Correct. While the drip will drip directly to the spot. Right, to the root zone. Where you right. want it to go. Where the roots can, you, you know, get. You know. So, so this is something we have to really encourage persons mm -hmm. to to get involved in but sprinkler has its place mm -hmm. sprinkler yeah. has its place mm -hmm. because what 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 sprinkler does if you are planting crops um that will cover your land mm -hmm. like, you know you're like putting broadcasting and so on mm -hmm. then sprinkler will be mm -hmm. ideal mm -hmm. you understand but once you're going to plant in roads or yes. uh, uh, continue furrows, mm -hmm. they will recommend that you yes. use the drip system okay all right excellent yes, excellent yes. okay um we're going to go back to the questions we need you to you need to get all questions correct all right or as close as possible to to all the the the, the answers all right or we need the first questions name our main sponsors um name the first three series or episode that we had and um we need to know the four there are four things that you actually need for seedling production and there's four things that crops actually need for good growth and development. So if you can answer those four questions, then this lovely package that is donated by Evergrow will be yours. All right, so um, we, we, we are here now, and it is good to know that we can share this type of information with, with our, our clients. Um, we don't only want them to, to listen to what we're actually saying, but we want them to practice some of the things that we're actually, because we, we do it so that you can see that it can be done, yes. right? Um, but for the for the, the mini irrigation, that is the one we use at home now. Yes, sir. All right, we have a few a few things here that we need. And, and to show you, you don't have to have anything too exorbitant or too expensive. Right, right, right. If you get a, a just a small piece of PVC pipe, half inch, inch pipe, pipe, maybe maybe a foot. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, you know, foot, somebody yeah. somebody may have twelve inches. You know, one um, at home, and what you'll do, you'll cut it in four. You try to get three pieces from it. Yes, yes. And the three pieces serve their purpose, right? Of which you spoke to this already. This yes. is a meal male adapter that is a male insert adapter. yes into the tank 
So the thing is that you normally screw it in so it can create but that, that reach. Ju just to make mention, we don't have a female adapter, but female adapter is just the opposite of this. In the case that we have demonstrated in the video, all right, because Mr. Harvey, we, 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 we try to get a bit that will give us a precise hole to, to fit the um, male adapter again. Now, once you put the thread tape on, then it's able to fit. But what is ideal is that we get the opposite of this is the female adapter. I'll put the female adapter inside of the tank. It is a 45 gallon drum, mm -hmm. I should say. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we'll be smaller. Yes, we'll be smaller. We get what we call it a washer to put over the male end. I'll put on it right here. And then we will we will um, connect now the male adapter now to the female adapter inside. But because the video that we show, we open up the tank, the tank wasn't open, it was mm -hmm. enclosed. Yeah. So we weren't able to go inside of the tank now to put in the female adapter. To but it, it, it works just the it, same. But it works just but the same. The important thing, Sir mm -hmm. Harvey, is to ensure that you don't have any leaks. Yeah. So that's once it, you can do it. the connection to prevent leaks of that hole, that mm -hmm. opening in the arm, the party bag and mm -hmm. jump, mm -hmm. then that is key. That's okay. what we are working towards. Mm -hmm. All right. And as Sir Harvey mentioned, we put on our valve. And the valve will monitor the water that is coming out. Yeah. All right. Sir so, Harvey uh, was saying that. um. This will cause anywhere between over 2,000 or more. And mm -hmm. we are saying that person don't have the money to buy a filter. What I recommend, filter is critical to your irrigation system. All irrigation systems mm -hmm. are heavy. The filter is very, very critical. Yeah. But if you don't ensure though, for the home bar at the back of your garden, mm -hmm. ensure that you put a nice piece of um, strip, strip, some yeah. shoral material yeah. or something yeah. mm -hmm. to ensure that whatever sediment go inside of the tank. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, it's it, prevented. because you don't really want, you want to prevent rather to prevent the sediment from going inside up here. Because it will actually clog up the clog up the gym. Okay. You see so these you emitters? Know. You see these emitters? Anything that goes inside of your gym system clogs the emitters. You want to prevent that. All right. So the key is to ensure that you have quality water going inside of your gym system. Okay. That is key. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, let me let me see. Um. We're just going to do a, a simple demonstration. Mm -hmm. um, as we say, you don't need too much of a tall or large piece of pipe. Yes. To insert after this goes into the drum, they insert. Just as the video. We want it. We want it to be uh, portable. Just so as if you if you want to move it from one location, you can actually pull, just it, pull apart. it apart. Yes. Right. So you insert. Mm -hmm. Pull it apart. Yes. Then just as we did in the video. Get, yes. Your valve. Lock off. Yes. Uh, your valve. Yes. Yeah. So this will be in the, the drum, um, everyone. So this will be inserted into your father bag yeah. and jump, then your pipe, then your valve, then another piece of pipe. Yes. Very critical. And, and then, then this will be attached now yeah. to your main surround. So you have this. Yes. And then this now will insert. Yes, right. But initially, though, a person who can afford because there are some persons that can afford and this is ideal you are what is ideal from what is not ideal and we are saying if you can afford a filter all right it will be much much better all right mm -hmm. so sir Avi, we we would have put this filter now everybody is right here right after the valve all right and all you need is two male adapter mm -hmm. sorry female adapter rather because this is two male end so you need two female adapter and piece of pipe will be attached to each, of course, well, and then you will connect to this. Right. So it's very critical, very, very critical that we have our filter. I don't want, even though Mr. Avi is saying that, you know, it's a low cost system, but I really want to point out the filter because the filter is very critical, yes. sir. Yeah. Fine. Fair All enough. right. Very Fair critical. Enough. All right. Now we have, um, let me call it a bung. Yes. Yes. Half inch bung. Yes. For, for your half inch pipe. Mm-hmm. No, the thing is that you notice that this line, it runs straight. Mm -hmm. And you need, as we say, low cost. Right, yes. So you insert another small piece. And we call it, we end plug. In the case right. of irrigation, we call it end, end plug. plug. As you see on And you just here. push it in. Yes. And it bung it. Or it, yes. it cut it. So that, is for the, that is for the low, low cost. cost. Yes. But for the ideal, as I have to represent the ideal, everyone. <laughs> All right, for larger farmers, then... We are what we call our rate is. It is right here. All right. It was shown on the video. But we are what we call now our end plug that will, will go to the end of our main line, which is very, very critical. I must outline though, everyone, 
that when we use our PVC against what we call our polyethylene, all right, there is a disadvantage, all right? And let me tell you what the disadvantage is. All irrigation fittings, I want to outline that, all irrigation fittings come in black and it's for a purpose. The reason why they come in black and not white is that you want to prevent what we call algae or algae. Some people say algae and some people say algae. But we want to prevent sir, of what so we call green. algae growth. Some people yeah. say maras, but that's the layman term. Yes, but yes. algae or algae now is mm. the technical term. Yeah. When we use our PVC fitting to do our irrigation, all right, we have over a period of time, especially when we run what we call um, fertilizers through our system. Mm -hmm. Then we have what we call al algae or algae built up. So what we are recommending, once you use PVC, it's good for you to paint it in a darker color. I bear it, sir, yes, yes, All right, so we yes. don't have that problem because algae, remember, in water we have nutrients and also mm -hmm. in water we have what we call microscopic plants. Cast them with our naked eyes, but over a period of time, come in contact with the sunlight, sir, yes, yes, and yes. nutrients is already in the water, yeah, yeah. then we start and seeing then, that. And then yes. what happens, we're going to do the fertigation. Uh, that, will also that even promote, yes, you know, the yes. growth of algae. So yes. that is a disadvantage of using PVC. I want to outline it to everyone. Yes. So okay. it is good. You can start out first if you don't have the money, but ideally, we recommend that you use a polyethylene fittings out pipe. Okay, okay, then? All right. All right. Okay. Um, very, very informative, very, yes, very fruitful yes, yes, discussion. Yes. Um, I don't know if we are going to take any questions <laughs> and answer or we are just going to um, hand, over, hand over to our, our, um, our host. That was so informative, so much information. And the public can go back to YouTube and review the video and go through it and get some more information. We have been getting some good feedback from okay. the YouTube and Google person. I think we think about the person of Stacy Campbell. She answered all four questions. Stacy Campbell. Tracy Campbell. Tracy, Tracy Campbell. Very she good. indicated topics discussed so far construction, installation, and management, education system, site selection, land prep, sewing of seed, nurse management. Okay. She also said that the sponsors are digital, pepper gold, sky pole, and agriculture. Yes. Okay. Um, things see the need for good growth, sunlight, moisture, nutrients, and air. And she says that um, what crops need, seeding production needs cotton tree, cotton yeah. soil, fertilizer, and seeds. Well, 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 yes, congratulations. Yes, yes. congratulations. Well, um, I, I will <laughs> say yeah, that is that is really, really good. Yes, you know? very yeah, good. Well, really like like that show that she she has been listed. I, but I want to go back and watch it. <laughs> that's, that's good. So we want to thank you today and thank you to the, to the public for watching. Um, thank you to Rada St. Andrew, yes. who has been uh, accommodating us throughout this series. So next week, we'll be focusing on the transplanting. Transplanting. Transplanting, uh, yes, of vegetable seedling. You know, so um, you Stay tuned because a lot of persons have been saying that they have been planting and they have been losing the seedlings. But yeah. well, I think I think this the next series will actually show them how they should really plant and manage these seedlings so they can get maximum from it. Okay. So thank you again. We want to thank our sponsors, Evergrow Farm yes. Store, yes. Digicel Foundation, um, Agroview, and um, our set design is done yes. by Sky Paul. Yes. So continue to watch. Join us next week and on Zoom and YouTube. Let her let her know a package get picked up at one ninety seven. And also you can do, uh, come by to Rada Agrimark. It's at one ninety one Old Hope Road. So some of the items, some of the seedlings that we have here, and are available for sale. So thank you for joining. Thank you.